Hello everyone, my name is Heather Whipples. I am the Cocktail Contessa and I am here today to talk to you about bitters and bourbons. All right everyone, welcome back. Right now we're going to do the really fun part which includes not only bitters but also bourbon. So what I will have you do is pause the video after you grab the following things. You're going to need four ounces of bourbon. In this case, I'm using Old Bardstown Bottled and Bond. Um, and you're also going to need, uh, in addition to putting four ounces in your mixing glass, you're also going to need um, one ounce of simple syrup. So if you want to uh, pause the video, you can go and grab those two things and put in your mixing glass four ounces of bourbon and one ounce of simple syrup. So for this next section, what we're going to do is create an old fashioned, just a base old fashioned, but not put any bitters in it. And what I'd like to do, which is going to be kind of fun, is for you guys to get out your bitters and do this along with me with whatever bitters you have on hand. I'm going to be doing what would, what would, um, eventually turn out to be probably eight different old fashions because I'm going to be adding one or two different bitters to each pour. Now each of these is going to be about a half of an old fashioned. So to start with, I've got my bourbon and my um, simple syrup in the mixing glass. I'm going to add my big cube of ice. That'll go in there for me. And now I'm going to stir it to dilute it. Uh, although bitters may be your spice rack, uh, ice is also very, very important to mixology and creating cocktails. It's how you dilute your cocktail down to a good uh, proof. Uh, in this case, we're going to find out exactly what an old fashioned tastes like without bitters. Um, I was at an event once and I tasted the old fashioned and I knew there was something wrong with it. And it took me maybe a couple minutes to figure out they just hadn't put the bitters in it. So, um, if you, once you have a cocktail and uh, an old fashioned that does not have bitters in it, you'll know what it tastes like in the future. But the whole point of this exercise is to practice um, and taste test what it feels like or what it tastes like and what it smells like when you create a cocktail and use different bitters. So when I am doing an old fashioned, I usually stir it until it's very well chilled. In this case, I have a very large piece of ice. So you probably won't need to stir it quite this long. Um, uh, but in this case, I'm going to let it dilute a little bit so I have enough to pour in each glass. I'm probably going to put an ounce or two of old fashioned in each of these glasses. Um, my glasses each have one cube of ice in them. You put ice in yours however you have at home. All right, so I've got my strainer on here, and I'm going to go ahead and start pouring. I'm going to pour them one at a time. I'll pour the first two at once. So we're going to start with these first two. Put a little bit more in there first. Now, for the very first one, um, I wanted to do something that was sort of aromatic first. So I'm going to start with the tiki bitters that I talked about a little bit earlier. And these bitters are to me, they say everything about baking spices. So to me, they're a perfect match for an old fashioned. So before we do that, what I want you to do is to take a sniff and see what that smells like to you. If you were uh, my honey, you would say, oh, it smells like bourbon. It does. But you take a, a sniff and you take a sip and it tastes like, it tastes like bourbon and, and sugar. It tastes like bourbon and simple syrup. Now bourbon itself does have some complexity, so it's not completely uninteresting, but there's not really much to it. So what do we do to fix it? Well, we add bitters. So to begin with, I'm going to add, um, like I said, some of these tiki bitters. Let me get them open. And I would normally put about 15 drops in if they, these were the only bitters I was going to put in and it was the whole cocktail. But instead, I'm just going to put about half of that in, so about eight, eight drops. And normally you would put your bitters in with your mixing glass, so it gets very well combined. But for this experiment, we're going to do it this way. So, okay, when I take a sip now, I get cinnamon, I get clove, I get, I get allspice. Um, I get a lot of uh, the deep, darker baking spices. And that's an old fashioned, right? So the in this case, the tiki bitters took some of the notes that were already in the whiskey. So the baking spices, a little bit of vanilla, there does there is some sweetness to these bitters. But kind of the cinnamon, um, the clove, um, sort of the darker baking spices, it's really elevated that and brought it all together. 
Now, normally I would also go ahead, if, I, if this were my cocktail and I were done, I would go ahead and uh, express some orange zest over it. Or uh, in this case, because I'm using the tiki bitters, I might just garnish with a uh, cinnamon stick. Um, but in this case, let's do something a little bit different. I haven't done this before, this combination. So again, this is just... This would be an equivalent of the equivalent of uh, two ounces of bourbon with a half ounce of simple syrup, just plain simple syrup, nothing flavored, and some of the tiki bitters. And let's see what adding some of the smoked cinnamon bitters do. Now for um, cocktails, a lot of people don't like smoke, something very peaty or smoky, but for a cocktail like an old fashioned, something where you smoke the glass can be very compelling and it can be very appealing. Uh, in this case with the smoked cinnamon bitters, they have a light smoke scent, but it's not overwhelming. But I'm still gonna be careful with how much I put in. I'm just gonna put four drops in. I'm gonna give this another little swirl. Take another sip. I'm getting really light smoky notes, not anything super heavy or super strong. And I do get a little bit of the smoke in here. It's interesting, I get it more on the finish than any other place when I'm actually tasting this. So for this, I would say this is a good combination. It might be a little bit too, um, a little bit too sweet still, so I would probably add a bit more of the smoked cinnamon bitters or a bitters that had a little bit more depth to it. So let me add a little bit more of the smoked cinnamon bitters in there. Give it a real quick swirl. And that really puts a lot more of the smoke into it and brings out the cinnamon much, much more. If you're not a big cinnamon fan, this probably wouldn't be a combination you would love. But if you like smoke and you like baking spices, this is a really intriguing um, cocktail. So at this point, if you have your own bitters, you may have put in orange bitters, or you may have put in Angostura first and then it added more orange or added cherry, or you could have added chocolate. So at this point, um, you could have actually already had the equivalent of taste of two different old fashions. So let's move forward to the next one. So this one again has no bitters in it at all. And for this one, I wanted to play with chocolate bitters. Um, and I wanted to use Bitter Truths chocolate bitters. Uh, we used the Chocolato Mole last time, which had the heat and the pepper in it. But these are just deep, dark chocolate notes. Um, I'm just gonna put a single dash in there, nothing too strong. And stir that a smidge. And when I smell this, I do, it does smell like, uh, it smells like cocoa nibs when you open up a new bag of cocoa nibs and you get that really deep dark chocolate scent to it. So this is a really good old fashioned. If I, um, if I were going to do this on my own, I would probably do this, but it needs something else. I think, um, with the chocolate, it is nice and it does add a little bit of complexity. Um, it's very, um, subtle. Uh, almost elegant. And um, the, the chocolate here binds really well with the base whiskey. But I think what I would do is add something like ginger bitters or perhaps uh, cherry bitters would actually go really well. Uh, Woodford's has a spiced cherry bitter. So if you have those at home, I would toss those in with some chocolate bitters and see what you think. In this case, I'm going to go with the ginger bitters. And these are Hella Bitters uh, Ginger Bitters. I use these all the time. And stir that around a little bit. So, so what this does is adds a little bit of the bite from the ginger. Um, and it gives you more of the aroma of the ginger actually in the cocktail. It's really interesting how the cocktail went from being sort of subtle understated chocolate to now it's got a little bit of that kick from the ginger so it's got a little bit of the spice um, the difference between the spice and the ginger and the mole is the mole i think of more as uh, like a cayenne spice or a pepper spice the ginger spice is different somehow it's rooty it's not as vegetal it's very it, it just tastes more like ginger root it's really kind of interesting um, in the glass this almost tastes like you're sipping something with chocolate covered uh, candy ginger with the sweetness from the bourbon so those are our first two so next up we will try two more 
All right, we are back with the last two. Um, I went ahead and poured a new set of this. I was worried about getting a little bit diluted, so I went ahead and made another batch. So this is the equivalent of, for our taste testing, one old fashioned, so two ounce of bourbon, a half ounce of simple syrup. So I'm gonna pour a little bit in this glass, about half and about half in this glass. That's about even, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I hope you guys are having fun taste testing this um, with your own um, collection of bitters. For this third one, I wanted to do something that was a little bit fun with black walnut bitters. Black walnut bitters from Fee Brothers are one of my favorite bitters to suggest to people who are new to getting into mixology. It's a really interesting flavor. It's very sweet. It's not an aggressive bitter, but you can really taste the walnut and the nut in it. And what I notice is that when I use it, it really brings out the nut flavors in a cocktail. In this case, in the old fashioned with the Bardstown, old Bardstown bottled in bond, it's going to pull out a lot of those nut notes. Now I have made an old fashioned with uh, black walnut bitters before, um, so I know I don't need, I need to use a lot to get the flavor in there. So I'm just going to put a single dash in there and stir that around a little bit. If you have these at home, it's really interesting to taste um, the cocktail before you add uh, black walnut bitters and then after, because you can really taste the nut notes really pulled out and pulled forward. So one thing about, this is really good. The one thing about the black walnut bitters that you'll notice is that they are very sweet bitters. The Fee Brothers bitters, again, are the kind that are made in glycerin, so they're sweetened. They're much sweeter bitters than those that are made like by crude bitters or bitterman's or bitter truth that are much, that are um, made in alcohol. So they have, um, no, don't have as much sweetness in them as the Fee Brothers do. This is a really good cocktail just with the black walnut bitters in there. It makes a very distinct old fashioned. But to me, um, it's a little bit too sweet um, and too earthy. So what I am gonna try is adding some Barkeep Apple Bitters. This, this is one of the first expensive bottles of bitters that I bought. And I use them as a way to brighten up a cocktail. Um, for some reason, they seem to take an earthy cocktail and really correct it and make it a little bit brighter. They are, they do have a very distinct apple taste and scent, so you don't need much. I'm just gonna put a single dash in there and we'll see what that does to it. Now, if you are creating cocktails on your own and you've got the black walnut bitters, you might try making a simple syrup out of apple cider or apple juice and using that with the black walnut bitters. And if that is too earthy with those two combinations of elements, you can add the apple bitters, which will brighten it up a little bit. So what's interesting is when I add the apple bitters, it brings out floral notes, which is, I didn't expect that, it's a little bit unusual. but that really corrects the sweetness. So the apple bitters are a little bit drying um, and uh, they lift the cocktail up a bit so it doesn't taste quite so earthy. I realize I use a lot of visual and sight descriptions when I'm talking about cocktails. For me, when I think about things for flavors, I visualize them. Um, some people will talk about them just in terms of flavors or they might talk about them in terms of sounds. Everyone has their own primary way of envisioning things or thinking about things. And for me, sight is one of the main um, ways that I um, think about things and, and look at them. Look at them. So this is a really nice combination. This is not one um, that I remember doing before. I may have, but um, I don't think I've done it just with plain simple syrup. Um, this is a really nice old fashioned to have. You could also, instead of using um, simple syrup, use uh, maple syrup, and that would give you a really interesting combination of maple syrup, black walnut, and apple bitters together. Uh, might taste a lot like apple pie. So um, that is actually a really good combination. So for the last one, I wanted to play with floral flavors. Now, floral flavors, you don't always get when you taste whiskey, but we know they're there, right? If you think about Four Roses and their yeast there are different types of yeast. There are certain yeasts and certain mash bills that tend to give us a more floral 
uh, bourbon, or more floral, whiskey. So we know floral notes are in there. They may not always be the first ones that we pick out. They're a little bit harder, I think, to detect than the baking spices, the vanilla, the caramels, the toffee, the really sweet notes. So I'm going to remind myself what a plain old fashioned takes like with a sip. And compared with what we've done so far, this is very flat. It doesn't taste that interesting. It tastes like there's something missing, and there is. It's bitters. Um, and for this one, I wanted to play with floral flavors, like I said. So I wanted to use Earl Grey to me is floral. It's a very, bergamot is an herb, but to me it is also very floral. So I wanted to use some Earl Grey bitters here, and they will be drying because they're made with uh, Earl Grey tea. And these are from 1821 Bitters, which is a bitters company out of Atlanta. They have a little set that you can get that has four different bitters in them. And this one had the Earl Grey bitters in it, so it's the one that I got. So I'm going to stroll that around to get it mixed in. And when I take a sip now, this is really interesting. The bourbon did not smell floral before, but now I really not necessarily get a whole lot of bergamot notes, but much more floral yeah, much more floral notes. Almost like you've walked through a garden and put your hand on the bushes and you're, you're taking a sniff on your hand. That is really nice. It's very dry. Like I said, because of the tea, it is more stringent. So it is very dry, but I really like that flavor together. If you are an Earl Grey fan, you're going to like this in an old fashioned. Now, I want to also add another layer of complexity with bitters. And I thought, well... Normally, if you're drinking hot tea, say Earl Grey, um, you might add a slice of lemon. So I have some Meyer lemon bitters. So I wanted to get those out and see what those tasted like in the actual, um, in the cocktail. Now, these are BD bittering bitters. These are also ones made in um, Louisville, Kentucky. And Meyer lemons are sweet, almost orange tasting, but they still have in the zest a lot of that orange, uh, a lot of that lemon bitterness. So I'm going to add those in there, give it a stir, and take a sip of this. On the nose, I'm not getting a whole lot of the lemon, but I am getting some, um, some citrus. Hmm. But you can really taste... You can really taste the lemon in there. So that cuts down on the astringency. It makes it a little bit brighter as a cocktail. And that is a really fun cocktail. If I were making this, I would garnish it maybe with a slice of lemon and a little bit of um, a floral herb, maybe lavender or um, a sage sprig, something that's a little bit savory. I think that flavor combination is really fantastic, actually. So by now, if you've been doing this with me, you've had um, the equivalent taste of eight different old fashions. So you've seen how bitters can be used either to bind flavors together into a whole or to add a flavoring um, component. In the case of the Earl Grey, we were using, re really using it to add flavoring components of the Earl Grey tea and the lemon together to make something that tasted or reminded you of tasting a cup of hot Earl Grey tea. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this section. Uh, next up, I'm gonna make some uh, Manhattan blanks. So Manhattan's just with vermouth and with uh, bourbon. And then we're going to add bitters to those and see what kinds of interesting things happen there. So I'm going to set up for that and I'll be right back. All right, everyone, I hope you had fun testing out different old fashions. Next, we're going to do Manhattan. So what I've got in my glass is the equivalent of two Manhattans. I'm going to pour a half in each glass. I've got uh, two ounces of Elijah Craig bourbon and an ounce of uh, Kochi for each Manhattan. So it's a total of four Elijah Craig and two ounces of Kochi in here. So that's what I've got in my mixing glass. I've also got it filled with ice and I'm going to go ahead and start stirring it. It's a little bit full, so I've got to be a little bit careful stirring it. So we have already tested out different um, bitters with Old Fashions. Now we're going to test them out with Manhattans. Manhattans are a little bit different. They're more spirit forward. There's no simple syrup. The sweetening agent in Manhattans is simply uh, sweet vermouth. In this case, Kochi uh, Vermouth de Torino, which is one of my favorite vermouths, along with 
uh, Carpano I Tika. Those are the two I use most frequently. Uh, both of those also come in 325s instead of 750s, which makes it a little bit better if you're someone who's working at home and who's only doing a couple of drinks a week. Um, it's uh, easier to get through your um, vermouth that way. And make sure you do keep your vermouth um, refrigerated. So we're going to chill out um, all of our Manhattan here. Again, there's no bitters added yet. That's what we're going to do next. So let's go ahead and pour a couple ounces in each one. This should be the equivalent of about a half of vermouth in each one. We'll see if I pour it okay. Now the goal here is really to taste how um, vermouths act, sorry, how Manhattans do with different bitters. All right, so we've got a pretty even pour in all of those. If you're doing this at home, um, go ahead and before we start this, sorry, pause this and go ahead and put four ounces of bourbon in your mixing glass and two ounces of vermouth. Mix those up over ice, pour those in your glasses, and then get ready to start. So if you've got all of your bitters out, you can play around with whatever examples that you have. I'm going to play with what I have. In this case, for the first one, I'm going to start with a little bit of coffee flavoring. This is a coffee pecan bitters, so I'm going to put a couple dashes of those in here. Um, this one's using drops, so I'm going to go ahead and put about eight drops in there. I'm going to go ahead and stir it a little bit to mix it up. Generally, when I do a Manhattan, I would go ahead and put the bitters in the mixing glass as I make it. But in this case, we're going to do some taste testing, so it's a little bit different from the normal procedure. And when I smell this, I get a lot of the coffee, not much of the pecan, but a good bit of the bitterness from the coffee. Mm, with the taste, this is really nice. So the vermouth here, the Kochi um, de Torino, the vermouth de Torino, is, is very sweet. It's a very high quality vermouth. It's one of my favorites to use for Manhattans. But with the coffee, that brings out a little bit more bitterness from the vermouth, and it's a very, it's a very nice contrast. Um, it's not, it reminds you of coffee, but it's not an overly coffee flavor there. Now, to layer on top of this, because I'm going to do two, verm or two bitters in each um, Manhattan here, I'm going to go ahead and use um, Woodford Reserve's orange bitters. Now, if you've been to Starbucks, I used to really like their uh, macchiato that had orange and caramel in it. So the coffee orange flavor to me is a very nice pairing. So I'm going to go ahead and add about eight drops of the orange spice bitters from Woodford's. And I'm going to take my spoon here, stir it up pretty good, and take another sip. So on the nose now, I get a lot more orange. The coffee has receded some since I've added the orange. And with the taste here, I do really like the combination of the orange and coffee. I do have to say I might, I think I prefer it just with the coffee pecan bitters. Um, those are a really nice combination here with the particular vermouth that we're using. Um, the orange is nice. It is a very nice uh, addition to this, but I think in this case, I really prefer just the coffee pecan um, bitters. Now with all this, what we're really doing is thinking about our own palate and looking at what the addition of different bitters does to the base cocktail. In this case, the base cocktail of just vermouth and bitters is sweet. It's not as sweet as an old-fashioned with just simple syrup, but it is a very sweet cocktail itself. So um, for the second one, I wanted to do something with some more traditional, maybe a little bit more traditional um, uh, Manhattan flavors. Generally with a Manhattan, you would use Angostura bitters, uh, a couple ounces, either two or two and a half ounces of bourbon, one to one and a half ounces of vermouth, depending on the bourbon that you use, depending on the vermouth that you used. And then in addition to that, you would sometimes people put orange zest over the top, um, squeeze it so it expresses the orange essential oils. And also sometimes people put a uh, cherry in there. So for the second one, we're gonna play a little bit with the cherry flavors. So I've got the Woodford Reserve Spice Cherry. 
So I'm going to take a sip of it without anything else in there. Which is fine, but not really remarkable in any way. So next up, I'm going to add some of the spiced cherry bitters. I'm going to add about eight drops. Normally in a uh, Manhattan, if this were a full-size one, I might add more like 10 or 15 drops, but we're just going to keep it at about half for this one since we're doing half ounce or half um, portion pours. And I do get a lot more cherry on the nose. So when I'm sitting here um, smelling it, I do smell the bourbon. I definitely smell the vermouth a lot. But I do get a good dose of that cherry in there. Tasting it, definitely good to get a, a good dose of the cherry. Um, and it is very nice. This would be what I would consider sort of a classic Manhattan with the uh, vermouth, the bourbon, and the cherry bitters. But let's um, make things a little bit more complex. And let's look at uh, gingerbread bitters, which I also have. I thought this might be interesting, not just to introduce uh, ginger, but this also has some clove, some allspice sort of flavors to it, some of the deeper, darker uh, baking spices. So we'll add about eight, about eight drops in there. Give this another stir. And this is really interesting. This really, this smells like, this smells like your kitchen smells when you're baking cookies around the holidays. Um, it smells like baking spices. It smells a little bit about, uh, I get a little bit of ginger from it, obviously. A little bit of the cherry still comes through on this. And when I sip this, this is much more complex than just the spiced cherry bitters. So adding the gingerbread bitters here adds a little bit more of the baking spices, which adds a little bit, a little bit of depth, a little bit of complexity, and makes it overall a more interesting Manhattan. Next up, we're gonna look at a little bit more savory flavors with uh, smoked chili bitters, so smoke and heat both together. And we're also gonna look at Rizzo, which is one of the crude bitters. Now, the components of this one are rosemary, grapefruit, and peppercorn. So a little bit of more savory notes with the rosemary. The grapefruit is gonna bring some citrus and some brightening citrus in there. And also the peppercorn, which is gonna bring a little bit of heat and a little bit of vegetal notes. So I'm gonna start by adding just the smoked chili. So this is gonna be our third Manhattan test. We're gonna put a dash of that in there. Give it a quick stir to make sure everything is combined. So this first taste is gonna be just with the smoked chili bitters. And I get a lot of smoke on this. You know, this is really interesting. These smoked chili bitters, these are one that I really recommend to someone who's building out their bar and wants to have it uh, have a, a number of options in order to do Manhattans and Old Fashions. Definitely get a lot of smoke from this. Um, it's not peaty in the way that a Manhattan made with a peaty scotch would be, but you get the, you get the hint of smoke in it and you get a hint of the char and you get just a little bit of the heat from the chilies as well. Now, in addition to that, we're going to add some of these Rizzo bitters. These are the crude Rizzo bitters that have rosemary, grapefruit, and peppercorn. And what um, interested me in these is they taste, I'm going to put about six drops in here. Um, the peppercorn to me, when I just use a straight peppercorn tincture, tastes almost vegetal. I need to stir this up a little bit. But for this, um, what you really want to do is make sure that you're combining like with like flavors. So I've got the smoke and the chili heat along with the peppercorn heat and vegetal notes with the, with the more savory rosemary notes. I 
This is actually really lovely. Um, <clears throat> I haven't tried this combination before. And it is a savory Manhattan, but it's not overly savory. So the vermouth sweetens it, keeps it sweet, but the addition of the rosemary, grapefruit, peppercorn bitters to the smoked chili bitters rounds it out. It's more of a binding agent, making you unaware of exactly what has changed with the cocktail, but knowing that something has changed, it kind of brings everything together. And that, that's actually a really nice combination. Um, I would really recommend the smoked chili bitters and the risotto bitters. Now, in addition to that, for the very last one, I wanted to go with something that was more fruity. So for this last um, Manhattan, I'm going to add peach bitters and cardamom bitters. So first I'm going to add the peach. Peach is a little more, bit more delicate. I'm going to add the fee bitters uh, peach, which fee bitters, again, is glycerin based, so it's going to be sweeter. So I'm going to add a dash of that. This bitters bottle is really full, so it looked like I shook two bitters in, but it would be the equivalent of one set of bitters. And I do find peach to be a really nice complement to bourbon. Um, that's, that's, really, that's really a good combination. If you are someone who loves peaches, I would make a base Manhattan and add some of these peach bitters and garnish with a fresh slice of uh, peach. That would be a really fabulous Manhattan to have on the porch while you're grilling, you know, working on something else. Um, that's really, really nice. It is very sweet because it is the Fee Brothers peach. It is a very sweet bitters. So what I'm gonna do is also add some of the Scrappy's bitters, cardamom bitters. Now, Scrappies is a set of bitters that I really, really enjoy. I'm going to add six uh, drops to that one. Cardamom is a spice that is, um, to me, it tastes Middle Eastern. It is something that is um, almost savory, um, but it is something that does match well with bourbon. So let's see how it does in a Manhattan with peach. So the smell, I get a lot of the cardamom. The cardamom is very strong, even with just six drops. I, I really enjoy this. This tastes to me like peach cobbler with a little bit of baking spices in it. The cardamom itself is a very strong flavor. If you're not a, a someone who loves cardamom and Middle Eastern spices and someone who really revels in that taste, you may not like this. You may want to stick with just cardamom or just peach itself. But with the cardamom, the cardamom dries it out. It overcomes the sweetness that you find in the peach. And, and I have to say, this is a really lovely combination. It reminds me of a peach pie that's got a really strong arm of um, baking spices in it. Um, not cinnamon, really. Um, you can definitely taste that it is cardamom. But this is a really lovely combination. So when you're testing with Manhattans, think about whether or not you want to go with something that's really sweet, something that's a little bit more savory, something that's a little bit more middle of the road, something that combines aromatic flavor with just a hint of maybe some flavoring agent like like we use peach here or you could use apple like we use with the old fashions. Think about whether or not you want to use something sweet like a chocolate or something spicy like the smoked chili bitters or the chocolate mole. You can really do a lot with Manhattans because they are not over ice, because they are served neat. The way that you actually put the bitters in and the way that you garnish them can bring out particular flavors. So that's sort of an idea of how bitters play in the Manhattan. So we've covered both how bitters play with the old fashioned and the Manhattan. So I hope that gives you a better idea of how to play with bitters with your different um, classic bourbon drinks. Um, for this next section, I'm just gonna go over what I consider to be basics in terms of what you should have if you're just starting out your mixology journey, if you're sort of in the middle and you want to experiment just a tad, or if you're a master, you've got a ton of bitters like I do. 
and you want to really want to branch out into something that's more experimental and uh, a little bit more um, high risk in terms of um, flavors and um, palate. I'm going to talk about that next. So I hope you enjoyed testing out your Manhattans. Finish what you like. If you don't like it, it's okay. I won't tell anyone. Thank you so much. I'll be right back. Now that we've taste tested our way through both Old Fashions and Manhattans by testing out different types of bitters, I wanted to close out this session with a little bit of information on what I would consider um, a very, you know, a starter kit for bitters, a beginner's mixology kind of kit, um, collection of bitters, an intermediate and an advanced. So I'm going to walk through that quickly and tell you guys what I think, in my opinion, is where you should start. Now, we've already talked about the basics. We've talked about Peychaud's, Orange Bitters, and Angostura as being the basic ones that you want to have at any bar, anytime you're going to be uh, starting to create drinks, especially whiskey and bourbon drinks. So for the for the just starting out, um, what I would do is um, Peychaud's, especially if you like Sazerac's, um, some orange bitters of any kind, Woodford, Thee Brothers, um, whatever you like, and some Angostura for the classics. I would also highly suggest getting one other aromatic bitters. I really like Old Forester's Bohemian Bitters. To me, they have a lot of baking spices in them. They're a very nice way to complement in an Old Fashioned or Manhattan both. Um, and they're really good also in um, whiskey sours too. So that's another option as well. Now, if you've already started making your own drinks, but you want to step it up just a little bit, this is what I would consider to be basic for someone who's starting to make their own drinks, wants to play around with flavors a little bit and experiment. So I'll start with one of Woodford's uh, spiced cherry bitters. I think when you're going to work with whiskey, you really need to have both orange and cherry bitters. So if you're going to start playing with flavors, start with Woodford's uh, spiced cherry bitters. Definitely do a chocolate. In this case, I'm doing one that doesn't have the heat um, spice component to it. This is um, uh, Bitter Truth dark chocolate bitters, which are excellent. We talked about the black walnut bitters, which are fabulous. Highly, highly suggest those. One thing that I do really love for people who are starting out to experiment is our um, Hella Bitters has a smoked chili bitter. And this adds both smoke and heat, which is fun to play around with um, in your classic whiskey cocktails. In addition, I have another sort of aromatic. It's a cherry bark vanilla from Bitter Cube. It's very vanilla. It's a sweet bitter, but it does give you a lot of baking spice aromatics lovely to have in your flavor palette and then last but not least the tiki bitters that we talked about earlier the bitterman's tiki bitters again more baking spices and i think with this palette with between the baking spices the black walnut the smoke and heat and also the chocolate you've got a lot more components to start building out your cocktails as you would like so once you have things like that in your flavor palette, so to speak, with your bitters, you're going to step up to more intermediate mixology type bitters. Now for these, I started with something that was pretty earthy. We talked about this. These are um, coffee pecan bitters. I really think it's important to have a coffee bitter once you start truly playing with flavors. Um, coffee and whiskey go really well together. Coffee bitters can stand up to a lot of other cocktails as well. Gin, not so much, but it's really interesting with things like rum, tequila, um, outside of the whiskey canon, um, coffee bitters can be really a lot of fun. In addition, I have um, the ginger bitters. I end up using these ginger bitters all the time. These are hella bitters, ginger bitters. Those are fabulous. I think you need something with a little bit more spice, and I think that ginger kick also plays really nicely with whiskey. And I have gone ahead and put in the Chocolata Malay um, bitters for this level of um, bitter collection. I think the heat and the vegetalness of it um, and the fact that it's slightly savory lets you play with a little bit more than you can just with sweet and baking spice bitters that are more in the first two sets of bitters. Um, I've also got the sassafras and sorghum bitters from Woodford Reserve. These are nice and earthy. They will really calm down a, a cocktail that's too sweet. Uh, anything that's got too much citrus in it, it can really Dial it back just a little bit so it's a lot more balanced. It's great as a binding agent. It's one of those bitters that can take a, a cocktail and sort of bind everything together and make it a delicious whole. 
Um, the last thing I have in here, I think when you get into the part of mixology where you're starting to play around a lot with flavors and flavor combinations on a more intermediate level, I think it's very important to have some floral bitters. For those, I'm going to go with um, one of these three. Either Scrappy's Bitters has a lavender bitters that are fabulous. Um, Old Forester's Hummingbird Bitters are very floral. They're lovely, lovely and sours. Um, also really good with champagne. And then as well, we've got the uh, Crude Bitterless Marriage, which, which is the one we talked about, hibiscus, lavender, oak. So those are the ones that I think if you're at an intermediate level, you're really starting to step up your game. Um, those are the ones I think you should think about investing in. Now, once you get past that point, you're going to get to the more advanced flavors. Um, these these um, bitters are not necessarily advanced or more expensive, but but they have components to them that are a little bit trickier to tie in with other things. I'm gonna start with the Barkeep's Chinese Five Spice uh, Bitters. These are fabulous, but they're very savory. They taste like Chinese Five Spice powder taste. Um, and they can very easily overwhelm a cocktail. So you have to be careful with them, but used judiciously, they can add a lot of mystery and a lot of heat and underlying mystery, um, uh, almost uh, intriguingness to your cocktail. In addition, I also have the Lindsay Bitters. These I think are fun because they're pecan, magnolia, and habanero. So they've got some heat, they've got the floral, and they've got a little bit of nut. Those three things together are kind of an unusual mix, but they work really well in these bitters. They're fun to play with. You just have to be careful because of the heat that it adds with the habanero. In addition, I'm going to say cardamom bitters are a must once you start playing truly with flavors. I think cardamom goes well with bourbon, as we talked about before. So I do um, do very much um, suggest that you guys invest in that if you like the flavors of cardamom and you like savory things in your cocktails. Um, I've got three here that I'm, I'm grouping together. These are smoky, salty bitters. So I've got the Pooter Smoke and Salt, which we played around with. Those are crude bitters. I also have Old Forester's Smoked Cinnamon Bitters. These are lovely. Um, played with those a little bit when we were doing the tastings. The smoke and the cinnamon together gives you spice and that smoke. It's kind of a fun combination. And I also put down um, Black Cloud has uh, bitters that are um, charred cedar. So smoke, think cedar and smoke. So it's not the same as oak or char. It does really have that cedar um, taste to it, uh, but it is very fascinating in cocktails. And then I'm going to add the apple bitters in here because the apple bitters are really fun to play with. I think you need an additional set, a couple of fruit bitters once you get to the more advanced level. So I really didn't know if I su su could, should suggest the apple or the peach. Both are fantastic. Really any kind of fruit that you enjoy would go well here. Um, so those are the ones that I would suggest if you're really stepping up your game and you want to do some experimentation and play mad scientist in your at your bar at home. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this sip session and kicking us off to talk about how bitters and bourbon go so well together. I've had a blast talking about this stuff and experimenting. I hope you have too, and I hope you've learned a couple things. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm at cocktail underscore Contessa. And um, if you want to check out my blog, uh, cocktailcontessa.com, I post uh, cocktail recipes all the time, and most of them are bourbon or rye. I'm a, I'm a true whiskey girl. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Have fun playing with bitters, and let me know what you find and what you tried and what you liked. Thank you so much.